None of you should pray Asr. So it's not to al Asr. None of you should pray Asr, Salat al Asr. He sent them out after the war. None of you should pray Salat al Asr except at the fortress of Banu Qurayza. So they set off. On the way, the time for Asr came in. As they continued, it began to go out. And then it reached the point where it became obvious they would not be able to reach Bani Qurayza, the fortress, before Maghrib. Maghrib would catch them on the way. So some of them said, let us stop and pray here. Let us stop and pray here. The other group said, no, among them, no. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, we should not pray after except at the fortress of Bani Qurayza. The other group said, but what the Prophet Sallallahu meant was for us to hurry up and go to Bani Qurayza. Not that we pray Asr outside of its time, in the time of Maghrib. You can't pray Asr in its Maghrib. Especially when Allah has already said in the Qur'an, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتَ Indeed, Salah is set for the believers at set times. It's prescribed for the believers at set times. If that is the case, we have to pray Asr, we have to pray Asr now. This is the time for Asr. The other group said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do not pray Asr except at the fortress of Banu Qurayza. Finish. End of argument. So, they went on. And the other group stayed and prayed and then followed them. The others, when they reached Banu Qurayza, they prayed Maghrib and they began the siege. The next group joined them, and then the group of the Prophet ﷺ joined them. After the battle, they came to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him about this incident. They told him, some of us did this, some of us did that. And the Prophet ﷺ did not correct anybody. He didn't say, you are wrong and you are right. He didn't. Now he, on the way, prayed Asr. He didn't tell either one, one's right, one's wrong, but on the way, he prayed Asr. He didn't go and pray at Bani Qurayza. So he indicated by his action what he intended. But he didn't ascribe error to the ones who took him literally for what he said, because what he said could be taken that way. So, Differences did arise amongst the companions over certain issues. Where there were issues wherein words had more than one possible meaning and could be understood two different ways, they accepted that others had the right to understand it one way and we had the right to understand it another way. And they carried on. No problem. Now, when those who understood it one way came into authority when Abu Bakr, when Omar were the caliphs, they made decisions based on their understanding as the Khulafa Rashidin who were to be followed. However, we find a narration from Abdullah ibn Abbas in which he is teaching some of the students of the Sahaba, known as the Tabi'oon, those who followed the Sahaba after the death of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those who now studied under the Sahaba, they were called the Tabi'oon, the followers or the successors. They were sitting and studying with him, and he was teaching them about Umrah done during the month of Hajj. Umrah in the month of Hajj, meaning Dhul Ka'dah. Dhul Ka'dah is not Dhul Hijjah, Dhul Ka'dah is considered to be among the months of Hajj. So he was teaching that it was permissible to do Umrah 
in those months. Now, whilst he was teaching this, and he was quoting a statement of Rasulullah as he taught it, because that's how they taught. They would say, we can do so and so because Rasulullah said this and that. Because that's how the narration of hadith began. As they were teaching, they relayed what they had learned from the Prophet Whilst he was teaching this, one of the, one of the tabi'un who were sitting with him, Urwa, Urwa, he complained, he got up and said, how can you teach Umrah in the time of the months of Hajj when Abu Bakr and Omar disallowed it? Abu Bakr and Omar said it was not permissible to make Umrah during the months of Hajj. Abdullah ibn Abbas looked at him and said, Go and ask your mother. Confirm what I'm saying if it is not true. Go ask your mother. Who was his mother? His mother was Asma bint Abi Bakr, the sister of Aisha. Anha. But Orwa insisted. Abu Bakr and Omar said. So Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Listen, here I am telling you what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, and you're telling me Abu Bakr said and Omar said, I fear your destruction. I fear your eminent destruction. Here I am telling you what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, and you're telling me Abu Bakr and Omar, not acceptable. Not acceptable. So, there were differences among the Sahaba where there were issues of opinion and statements of the Prophet ﷺ, where the Sahabi may not have heard that particular statement, was not aware of that particular statement, so he made a ruling based on his opinion. But now, if the hadith the madhab of Rasulullah is authentically brought, then there is no place for opinion. No place for opinion. This was the way of the Sahaba. They did differ, and they accepted differences, except when it became an issue of an opinion and hadith. Statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud went to the masjid in Damascus, and there he found people sitting in circles. One in the middle of them would say, "Subhanallah," and they would all say in unison, "Subhanallah." Alhamdulillah! Alhamdulillah! Abdullah took a stick and started chasing them out of the masjid. He said, What are you doing? The Prophet Muhammad's body is still warm in his grave and you're already changing the religion? But they said, Rasulullah said, after prayers, we should say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, and Allahu Akbar. Didn't Rasulullah say that? Yes. But, how was that statement to be implemented? Was it according to your opinion, and my opinion, and his opinion, and her opinion? Or was it in accordance with the way of the Sahaba, how they understood it? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud pointed out to them that your understanding is incorrect. This is not our way. This wasn't the way of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. They did not gather in circles in the masjid, you know, say one of them saying, SubhanAllah, and everybody else repeating in unison after him, SubhanAllah. They did not do this. So to remember Allah in this way is bid'ah, innovation, not acceptable. And they were very concerned.